Did you know that when people with type 1 diabetes are first diagnosed, they have up to 20% of their beta cells still functioning? And those beta cells are worth their weight in gold as any insulin production helps significantly with glucose control and can reduce long-term complications. But those cells typically only survive another couple years post-diagnosis. So when somebody is first diagnosed, you have precious moments left with those beta cells to provide education and support. That's why when our friend was recently diagnosed with type one, we sprung into action like this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. Thanks for the call, doctor. You guys, I was just diagnosed with type one diabetes. Oh boy, here we go. Come on, Eric, we don't have much time. Uh, we gotta get going. Call your wife, she can meet us at the clinic. Hey, this is Dr. Edelman. I have a patient with new onset type one. We're coming in in the next 15 minutes. You guys, what, time what's is going on? Essence. What are you talking about? What's the hurry? Where are we going? And what is this giant countdown clock for? Uh, because on, Eric, let's go. you likely have some functional beta cells, but we gotta act before this clock runs out. Now, come on, let's, let's break let's in. Go, go, let's, go, let's, let's go, let's go, let's uh, go. All right, so we were obviously having some fun there. Eric, our producer, cameraman extraordinaire, actually doesn't have type one diabetes. He, he wishes he did, right? I he wish be, he did. Yeah, he'd be cool <laughs> like us. Um, but what we're trying to impress upon all of you is how kind of vital this, this initial period when people are first diagnosed is in terms of, this is a life-changing diagnosis, the education you need to provide, all of that. But then specifically, is there anything you can do in this early period um, to help preserve beta cells? And we're gonna kind of get into all of that. So we wanted to start with kind of like the background. That type one diabetes is hard, it sucks. This disease like is really no fun to have. Um, and there's all kinds of data now that you know, like only like 20% of type ones in their country get their A1C to goal. We still have high rates of hypoglycemia where like 5% of type ones are still going to the hospital every year with a bad low. DKA, same kind of issue. What about weight in type one diabetes? Well, weight has been going up in general due to the fact that we, us type ones have to take insulin, that may cause weight gain. And of course, with weight comes cardiovascular disease and we're seeing that as well. Yeah, and so type ones have a two to four fold risk of cardiovascular disease that's not explained by just blood sugars. Even with like good A1C control, still high rates of cardiovascular disease. So the, the, the reason for that is type one diabetes is not a solved problem. We have had some advances and we'll get into that, um, but there's still a lot of issues to overcome. So the second part is, is about the advances. And Steve, what's been probably the biggest advance or advances in, in type one care? Well, for sure hybrid closed loop systems mm -hmm. where the pump communicates with the CGM. That would be number one. It's not a cure. It kind of bridged the gap until a cure comes along. Yeah. So this has been huge. Steve and I both wear these hybrid closed loop systems. But again, like it's not just set it and forget it. Like we just put these on our blood sugars are perfect. We still have lots of highs and lots of lows. But what we don't have is any kind of medication or intervention that once somebody is diagnosed with type one diabetes, that we can actually treat the underlying disease, the autoimmune destruction of the beta cells. And this is really important because as we mentioned at the top, when people are diagnosed like Eric, they still have 10 to 20% of those beta cells that are still there. And those are absolutely worth saving. Yeah, and we know that over the next couple years at most, those beta cells will die off and you will lose the benefit of having a auto-regulatory beta cell that secretes insulin when you need it and doesn't secrete it when you don't need it. Yeah, that's a good point. And the, the, that time period is variable. But in general, the later people are diagnosed, the longer those beta cells uh, stay alive. So when they're diagnosed as adults, that's actually a kind of a better prognosis. Than kids, it kind of comes on a little bit you know, faster for sure. So this chart can I think really help people understand a little bit more like visually what we're talking about. So to orient people and kind of like the far left is when you're born, you got 100% of your, your beta cells. That's kind of like that light blue that's all the way at the top. And then you progress through the stages of type one. And we've talked a lot on uh, TCUID and our different platforms about stage one, stage two. These are people that are at risk for developing clinical type one. That's when you can um, check autoantibodies to see if people are at risk. But as soon as you get to that stage three, that's what we would just call type one diabetes. Newly diagnosed. Newly type diagnosed. One. You've got type one, meaning your blood sugars are high, you're on insulin, those kinds of things. And you can see with this like kind of Roman numeral four there, 
That's the pure part when somebody is first diagnosed. And you can see that blue shaded area is still, that's their beta cell function, like 20% of, of kind of like a high, you know, where they started. So those are still there and they're worth saving. So that brings me to the, the next point here, Steve. So sometimes when people are first diagnosed, we call it the honeymoon period. Yeah. So what is the honeymoon period? Well, the honeymoon period is when those beta cells that are still working, they're doing their last ditch effort to keep the blood sugars normal. And it's an auto-regulatory beta cell. It's, it secretes glucagon when you need it, insulin when you need it. And that's why people who have, who are in the honeymoon, their CGM values are awesome. Mm -hmm. Their time in range is 90%, very little glycemic variability. But the issue is those benefits go away because the honeymoon period ends. <laughs> <laughs> um, it did for both of us. Well, that's uh, what I, it's usually that when you throw in a joke about your ex-wife. So appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what is the, the honeymoon? That's exactly right, Steve. So what's, what happens is that uh, a type one is usually diagnosed. Um, they go into DK, their A1C is 15 plus, but then we treat them with insulin. They go in the ICU or whatever they have to do, and we get their blood sugars back into normal range with insulin. And those beta cells that were working overtime to kind of like control blood sugars, they went kaput for a little bit. But when we kind of de-stress them, bring the blood sugars back into normal range, those beta cells can kind of come back to life. And as Steve said, man, those like have huge benefits. We get jealous when we see people in like in this honeymoon period that can go on for years. Their time and range is like 95%. They're taking very little insulin. Sometimes no insulin. Yeah. They go off of insulin. I was actually off insulin for almost a year when I was diagnosed. I don't know about you. You yeah, off insulin? I, no, I was not off insulin. Yeah. Well, I had a better honeymoon, I guess. But anyways. <laughs> and there's been long-term benefits that we know. If you look at type 1s over time, they've been diagnosed 20, 30, 40 years, whatever. If they make any C-peptide, any insulin production at all, they have less complications, less microvascular, macrovascular complications, better quality of life. So just, just a drop of insulin coming from these beta cells, like we said, is worth its weight. In and cold. there's a thing called metabolic memory or the legacy effect. And they've shown, they have data that if you have good control in the early period when you're first diagnosed with type one, you do better way down the line as well. Yeah. I can't, I can't explain that, but that's, that's the data. Well, all right, so we've convinced you. These beta cells are great. And so how do we preserve beta cell function? Well, this is where we run a little light on kind of recommendations because the field needs to, you know, produce Advanced. some more kind of advances here. So what has kind of been an old dogma is the first thing that you can kind of do is, is tight glucose control. So there's some, like, like I said, kind of older data, that simply controlling your blood sugars better with, with insulin may help kind of rest those beta cells that you have left and allow them to continue working for longer. A honeymoon for a year. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. Much longer than average. Did your parents keep your control real tight? Well, I wasn't on insulin for like a year. So I meant I, diet and everything. Not really. I think I was just kind of lucky. But Anyway, so tight glucose control, but that's what you're going to do anyways. But part of that means getting on a CGM immediately. You may not need a pump if you're not using like a whole lot of insulin. You might just need just a basal insulin. But keeping your blood sugars, your time and range above 70%, your A1C less than 7, that's what you're going to do first of all. The second is, are there any medications approved now to um, preserve insulin production? And the unfortunate answer there is not yet. But... There are some, um, there's been some published results, there's some ongoing studies that we're hopeful that we might get a, a first approved drug or drugs in the actually very near future. Yeah, and there's several companies in that space, which is the first, you know, 100 days of getting type 1. The, the time course is different between each company, but hopefully we will have an approved drug for new onset type yeah. 1 diabetes. So for our friend Eric, you know, the first thing we would do, continuous glucose monitor, get him in to see a, a, a provider that specializes ideally in type 1 diabetes. Endocrinology is a broad field. It's, you know, only a subset of us that do diabetes and even a smaller subset that see type 1. So if you're lucky enough to find somebody in that area, that's really crucial. You know, and you could find a really good nurse practitioner that may have yeah. type 1 herself a physician assistant. They just have to be knowledgeable exactly. about type 1. So I think we're trying to use the word provider intentionally because this this may not be a doctor. Like, uh, you know, there's lots of good MPs, PAs that do, honestly, a better job sometimes than yeah. the endocrinologist. Yeah, just more experience. Um, 
And then patients will come to you and say, what can I do? What else like, um, do you have to offer me? And this is where you can talk about clinical trials. So um, JDRF, formerly JDRF, now Breakthrough T1D, has a resource if you just Google Trial Finder JDRF or Trial Finder uh, Breakthrough T1D, it's actually a site you can go to and you can click, here's where I live, here's my zip code, here's how far I'm willing to travel, here's my kind of like clinical details. And it does its best to, to kind of pair you up with some options um, in your area. So that's one resource to have in your back pocket. The other is literally, you know, if you're not in an academic or university like setting, having um, patients call just the endocrinology office or um, the endocrinology department at the, the closest university. That happens to us quite a bit. We get cold called and they'll say, is anybody here doing yep. you know, clinical trials in type one diabetes? They'll usually refer them to me or you or something like that. So that is, um, it might seem a little, I don't know, antiquated, but that actually can be pretty effective. And we, we, we typically know what kind of important type one studies are going on and we can point them in that direction. Yeah, and we usually have things available for people to try, so it's, it's important. So I think with that, you know, we wanna hear from you and there's a lot to talk about here, uh, but maybe your diagnosis story, your honeymoon period, Steve's was crappy, mine was long God, and amazing. Yeah. Um, all those things, we loved hearing from you guys, so please type in questions, comments, and we will respond if you guys um, have questions. And then please be sure to, to essentially follow us on all the platforms, like us, all those things. Those are really important for us to continue to be able to do this for free and provide this kind of education. Well, thanks, Steve. It's great doing this with you, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you on the next one. A whole year, honeymoon. Oh, God, that's amazing. 